Chapter 30 Jordan and Aaron made their way down into the den, nearly missing the couch as they fell onto it blindly. They hadn't stopped kissing since leaving the kitchen. Jordan could barely catch his breath. Aaron refused to come up for air. Jordan just kept kissing her. Who needed air? A throat clearing startled the two lovebirds. They looked to the steps leading from the living room and saw Connor standing there, grinning. Sorry to interrupt, he said. Jordan and Aaron looked at each other, clearly embarrassed. No problem, said Jordan. What's up? Nothing. I just got bored hanging out with myself and wondered if I could hang out with you. Oh, um, sure. Jordan turned on the TV. Connor, who was standing next to it, turned it off at the base. You have something else in mind? Jordan asked. Connor placed himself on the floor on the other side of the coffee table from his cousin. I just want to talk. Okay. About what? Something bad is going to happen tonight. I can feel it. His grin was gone. He started to look nauseated. Jordan sat closer to him. Does this have anything to do with Grandpa? Or Travis? Aaron added. Connor looked at her. Yes and yes. Tell us, Jordan said eagerly. He felt like his cousin was finally about to open up to him. Tell me so I can help you, bro. Connor started breathing heavily. His head was down. Connor, what's happening? Aaron, Connor said quietly. I don't think your cure worked. Don and Monica lay in bed sweaty and happy. His foot was hanging off the side of the bed, but he was too spent to pull it up. He was comfortable, however, and therefore content. Well, said Monica, that was something. Don laughed. Indeed it was. Just what we needed. Don was exhausted. What he needed now was a nap but he didn't want to fall asleep on his wife, not during their special night together. Nevertheless, he succumbed to his exhaustion and found himself dreaming of a terrible place. If hell existed, this was it. He was in a dark tunnel, surrounded by shadowy arms that reached out to him from the walls. He tried to stay away from them, but they managed to touch him anyway. Their touch was cold and evil. Don ran forward, where a dim light shone on him. He had to keep going forward, because there was nothing but blackness behind. When he got there, he saw he was in a cavern. There were stalactites and stalagmites everywhere. He couldn't believe the size of the place. There were no light sources, yet much of the area before him was visible. He found himself standing on the edge of a cliff. When he looked down, he could not see the ground. How did you get here? An angry voice asked from behind him. When Don spun around, he saw nothing but a dog. An English bulldog. The demon. Don smiled, despite his fear. This is your prison, isn't it? This is my home. Am I really here? Or is this a dream? It seemed worried now. Let's just say you're not dreaming. I am talking to you. As the dog? The bulldog cocked its head to the right. Is that how you're seeing me now? That must be the way you want to see me. Don looked around. This is the place you want to escape? How am I here? He didn't know whether to believe he was physically here, despite what the demon said. No wonder you want to leave so badly. You've seen the good life, 
my life, and now you see yours as inferior. Suddenly, the dog turned into a black, man-sized bat and took flight, soaring past dawn and around the large stalactites. It gripped one in particular and began clawing inside a hole. We've gotten a taste of a real life and we want more. It pulled its large, bony arm out of the hole. In its claw was a small red bug the size of a baseball. The demon ate it, lime-green blood oozing from its large pink lips. It then smeared the goo over its chest. The lips that covered that chest opened and closed hungrily. We? Don asked, disgusted by the sight. He hadn't seen one for years, and even then he'd gotten brief glimpses as it attacked him. The creature looked in the throes of ecstasy. At the sound of Don's voice, it suddenly came back to itself and looked at him. My brothers and sisters! Don looked around the cavern. I didn't know you have a family. How could you not? You killed my brother, after all. Don found that puzzling. Your brother? The one who tried to take over your brother, Ethan. Too many thoughts raced through Don's head at that moment. That wasn't you? Of course not. Dead is dead. But you said you were trying to come back. The creature looked at him from beside the stalactite. Its glossy eyes narrowed. Then it laughed. That must have been my other brother, Mathello. He likes to play tricks. But how? I don't understand what's happening. The demon leaped from the stalactite and landed in front of Dawn, who backed away to give it room. The creature stood face to face with him, all of six feet tall. My brother, the one you killed, found a way for us to escape this place and live among your kind. He kept it secret, however. He was always selfish. Shortly after his death, we discovered his secret. We found a way to communicate through his victims. Everyone he infected? Don guessed. You can't possess them forever, though, can you? No, we can't. Not yet, anyway. What do you mean, not yet? We have a plan in effect. It laughed. Are you going to tell me this plan? And spoil the surprise? Of course not. Why have you told me anything at all, then? Because there's nothing you can do to stop it. Noise began to filter through the cavern. Don saw dozens, maybe hundreds of black shapes flying toward him from a far corner where darkness was strong. The sound of flapping wings made his blood run cold. Help me! A male voice called from the direction of the creatures. It sounded so familiar, but it couldn't be Travis Hooper. Suddenly, Don was jerked from the cavern, back into the tunnel, and into a blindingly white sky. He was waking up, and not a moment too soon. Monica was next to him, in the hotel's bed. She'd had her back to him, but she turned when he groaned. Bad dream? she asked. Yeah, but it's better now. Though his heart was still racing, and the covers were now under him instead of on top, like they'd been before, he began kissing her 